Some of the attempts to go back to Mars, actually 1994, which didn't succeed, it was called the Mars Observer spacecraft. And uh, we'll discuss some more of the details later, I guess, but uh, basically what you had at the time in 1994 was a quick, so lots of independent researchers who discovered very interesting things about the, uh, the, from the data that was returned from the Viking missions. And they were basically lobby, wanting to lobby in Congress to basically make, change mission priorities for Mars Observer so that they would actually focus more on the kind of controversial areas, which is what we'll look at later as Cydonia. Cydonia. Which, you, which people, uh, and even NASA, and NASA uh, even NASA employees described as there being a, what, a hill that looks like a face on the Cydonia region. A face region. on Mars. So yeah. it, it was basically seen as a, a potential uh, potential evidence, potential evidence that is for intelligent life on Mars, as on the universe, other than on Earth, which is basically one of the main things that we are, we're actually all fascinated by. Is that are we? Is this all there is, intelligent life-wise? And here, it, here was a face look, on on a you know for inside on you looking back up at the camera. It does. It does. It's intriguing, to say the least. And what people were trying to do is lobby Congress into getting more information. Mm -hmm. All they needed to do is take some more photographs and to prove once for all whether it was artificial or not. That's all they were asking. So uh, a guy called uh, Professor Stanley McDaniel uh, wrote a basically a peer-reviewed paper based on uh, uh, summarizing all the a lot of the research from independent scientists such as Richard Hoagland, Mike Barra, and Errol Torren. And he basically, it was a briefing document for Congress, congr uh, con uh, congressmen. Uh, anyway, the report was published at some date in 1994. Three days later, they lost contact with the probe. And that was three days before it was due to go into insertion in the orbit around Mars. So, Conspiracy theorists kind of say, oh, they pulled the plug. And actually, really, even NASA say they accidentally t uh, d unplugged the telemetry. It was a human error at their end. They unplugged the telemetry. So NASA spent, wasted a billion dollar spacecraft, lost it, and never, never, never saw any data from that spacecraft. Now, people speculate that, as people do, that, OK, we've got a billion dollar spacecraft. They have Na NASA do the space programs, we know it, but also there's kind of like there's other interests who can control uh, you know, military interest, for example. And it's entirely possible that that, that spacecraft was resurrected and did actually go into orbit around Mars and was still used. But we, to this day, we don't know. As far as we know, it's just lost. Okay. And it was just interesting because people were trying to get more, more accountability from the space agency that were paying for. That's all that was happening. Well, that, the Americans are paying for it. We yeah, the Americans, we were, they were paying for it. Yeah, they were not being Congress, not us. <laughs> Our effort to land on Mars... Um, <laughs> <laughs> was uh, well, it was going to bounce, wasn't it? Oh, the Beagle. The Beagle. Yeah, this that was an interesting. Yeah, because that Beagle was carried. Was it nine? I forget what that was. Probably it wasn't about that long ago, was it? Yeah, because it, it was supposed to be there about the same time as the Mars explosion. I've, rovers. I've met the professor who have. created that that mission. Yeah, In fact, he signed the book happy. for me. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. I think. Do you this think perhaps he was sabotaged because he was going to well, be the first to prove life was on Mars? Yeah, of all of all the, of all the landers that were, were sent. Well, the Viking mission. Uh, the, Vi the Viking 2 lander, the second lander from the Viking mission, was the only one with the chemistry experiments on. And this, the, the, the um, label release experiment tested positive for life. As you know, everyone has probably heard about this. But they basically decided that, okay, because the other two tested negative, the other two tests, that it obviously must have been a false positive. So we've, we, back in the 70s, we had a t positive test for life. And this, this probe, this particular lander from the European Space Agency, in that case, had a, an Im instrument which would have been key to actually identifying biological materials. And obviously, unfortunately, the, the lander was lost. It just crashed into the planet. Uh, the, the understanding is that basically the airbags or the, or the, the canopy did deploy properly, hence it just crashed. But yeah, but, but who, knows who knows why? I mean, OK, let's, let's have a look at the Pathfinder images then, because these are the, the, the more yeah. recent images. This is where we have two Mars rovers. Actually, the Pathfinder mission was basically a, tr a trial run for the current... Currently, we've got... To, to, still to this day, we have the, the 2004 mission. There's still two rovers running around. OK. But back in 1997, they had the trial run of trying to send a rover, a robot, basically, to Mars. And it was a feasibility study to see if they could actually do it technically. And so they managed to get a lander onto, onto the planet with a little rover called Sojournia, which, was, which then was able to roll off the, the landing pad, dr drive up to a rock and do some kind of drilling into a rock. It was a feasibility study for the for the mission that was going to due for 2004, and it was it was successful. Well, it well let's, look, it was possible, let's, so. let's look at number four, shall we? Okay. Have we got image number four. There you go. Here we go. So this is the yeah. This image shows you the actual little, uh, robot called Sojourney, mm -hmm. which is uh, on sitting next to the rock, ready to investigate it. Mm -hmm. It didn't have much of a range. It was basically a feasibility study, as I said, 
but it was still kind of there's still some good experience some experiments in there they were doing but fundamentally it was basically to see if they could actually get control of a robot around the planet. Okay, and what about the color of the sky here? Yeah, this is 1997. Remember, this is like 20, uh, just over 20 years later, after the Viking missions, and the sky is now like a kind of reddish tint, slight pinkish reddish tint to it, which is kind of obviously we weren't expecting that. We'd seen the Viking photographs and we'd thought, okay, Mars had a blue sky. Anyway, we've got the next image, w which we'll <coughs> maybe show. 4C. Do we have 4C? Uh, again, it's a, a photograph taken at a different time, showing a different uh, direction. Again, very similar image, very reddish rock. The rocks are looking a lot redder, and brown, uh, deeper redder than they were before. The sky is looking kind of a pinkish red hue, which is kind of interesting, because these are, these are typical of the photographs that returned from the Pathfinder mission in 1997. Okay, and then, and then we get on to the 2004 mission. Yeah, so if we, <coughs> back in, in 2004, uh, the NASA sent basically two probes aboard, I think, I forget which orbiter sent them actually, but there's, there's a Mar the Mars Exploration Rover program took two rovers called Spirit and Opportunity, both of which successfully landed on the planet Mars. I think it was January 2009. They were expected to last for... Uh, um, 2009? 2004, Four. sorry. 2004. Yeah. They were expected to have a lifetime of probably about six months each. They had a warranty for six months. <laughs> a warranty? This is back in 2004. Yeah. Take them back to the dealership if they don't yeah, work. Yeah, what are you going to do? You know, okay, I think we're finished with that picture now. Thank you. Yeah, so back in 2004, obviously, we've got these two rovers, and um, they lasted... Well, they're still running to, this, to the present day. They're still taking images. And so they've lasted, like, 12 times the duration they expected them to. So they've been a huge success, and they've captured, like, m probably millions of bytes of data as well. That doesn't really mean anything. To co if you compare, like, the missions from the, from the Mariner missions from this early 70s, well, the first mission, successful mission, which I think was a f uh, not a, an orbit, a flyby, actually, sent 21 images back. If you look at the number of images, you can go to the, the NASA website, you'll see thousands of images in there, and it adds to them daily. So we're collecting a hell of a lot of data. Okay, let's let, let's look at some of these images then from the 2004 mission. This is with the two rovers, and uh, let's look at number 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 five, please. Image five. Oh, it's a bit <coughs> dark, isn't it? Yeah, you can kind of see, yeah, it's quite a dark image really. But um, this is from the, uh, the rover called Spirit, and it's, you can see its tire tracks. It's, it's driven driven up, and it's looking back. Where it's been, and it's, it's looking at um, some collection of rocks on the right, on the right. Okay, side. Let's, let's go to number six. And yeah, this is a brighter image, but again, what you're seeing is uh, this is actually the, what this one of the rovers still on its landing pad. So mm -hmm. you see the kind of uh, the white material on the right hand side. That's because it's still sat on its landing pad. But what you see is in the distance. You see got like a, uh, you can see like the glow from the sun, but you've still got a reddish hue in the sky. Reddish tinge, yeah. You've got very, very red and brown, reddish brown rocks. Okay, so why are these images looking so red all of a sudden? Why, is it, why are we being sold the idea that Mars is very so alien when earlier images looked, it looked a it bit looked like home? Still, it, looked like, yeah. it looked like, I don't know, Nevada or somewhere. Well, I don't know. There's, in one sense, it could be that the reason, the rash, rationale for looking at images like this, and we, maybe, we understand that Mars is the red planet after all, so maybe we're expecting red images. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe we got it wrong back in the 70s somehow. But well, there's, there's one way of knowing, though, yeah. isn't there? So if we, look at the, if we look at number seven, image seven... Yeah. One thing they've, they actually did on both the Viking missions and the current missions, and actually the Pathfinder mission as well, they have these uh, things called the colour calibration targets, which look like little joysticks, computer joysticks, on the, on the, on the top of the rover. And this particular image has got a, a, a cutout and a zoom. If you can zoom, it's zoomed in on the actual calibration target. So you'll see in like a round disc with a black joystick type yeah. thing. And at each corner, you have a, a, a different colour. On this particular image, you'll see on the bottom right, you've got a bright red colour. The top left and the top right are showing a kind of brown colour. And I can't I quite make out the colour on the bottom left. It looks kind of dark for me. You can't really make it out on this particular image. OK. Well, this, is, this poses a problem because this car target was designed for solely for the purpose, well, not solely for the purpose. It's, it measures light intensity, but it also allows you to calibrate the colours correctly. Now. For some reason, the, the two colours at the top are actually showing the same colour, so something's obviously wrong. Now, if we're just going to look at the next image, we'll see what it should look like, what it looks like on the Earth. Okay, number eight. This is what it looks like on the Earth. So, on the bottom right of this image, this is, uh, you'll see it says uh, two worlds and one sun, obviously, because it's, it's our neighbouring planet, it's our next door neighbour's Mars. Yeah. It's, uh, just, it's just a little bit further from the sun, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a bit but further it's it, But it's in the Goldilocks zone, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not it's too cold and not too hot. <laughs> Still, yeah. In the trust axis, yeah. So we, what this image shows is basically the calibration target on the bottom right. You have a blue target, 
and on the left, I, I, to memory it's actually green, but I can't see this on this monitor, but it's, it's, it's a green it's target. It's <laughs> it's what, sorry, we've got a rubbish monitor oh, that's, to look sorry, at that's it on. Top left. Top left under the guy's finger is actually green. It's green. Uh, I think red is the bottom left and or yellow is the top right. So Hopefully you're getting the right yeah. colours at home. With these last few delights, I can't quite see the monitor, but... <laughs> it's, it's so basically, good. this is actually, this was designed to, to you so that you could actually calibrate the photographs properly. Now, if we can go back to the previous image, which was... Go back to number seven. Seven. You see that the, what the target, the image that was actually blue in the, in the, tra in the, the one in the, in the laboratory is now bright red on yeah. Mars. Well, that's... So they've made anything blue go red. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it shows that it hasn't been calibrated properly. Well, people could have, have argued uh, that the reason this shows up as red is because the Martian sky is red, therefore it's giving off lots of red light, which is saturating the thing, so everything glows red. Well, the problem with that is that when you have something that's blue, something that is a material that is blue absorbs uh, light and basically re readmits blue light. This, if, you, if all you do is shine a red light on it, it will, not, it will never absorb the red light and readmit red light. It, blue t color materials just don't do that. Blue will it's stay a, blue. Yeah. The only thing that will emit red light is something that will emit red light, which blue c doesn't do. Sorry. So there's something really wrong with it. The image has simply not been calibrated. They were showing false color images, effectively. But, but, uh, this is just insane. I mean, they can't possibly have made these mistakes by mistake, can they? Because they've got the same access to these calibration. <coughs> systems as, yeah, I mean, as we have the, the when we've that's right. found the right photographs. I have to, there, is a, just to, there, is, there is a situation where they actually use more than red colour. With what was described as a situation where they use red, blue, blue and green channels, the rovers are also measure infrared light. So they have uh, well, four, they measure four, the eyes and the cameras on the rovers measure four, uh, four wavelengths of uh, light, blue, green, red and infrared. And uh, sometimes what they'll do is substitute infrared for red, so they'll, they'll, rather than use the red channel to show red light in the images, they'll use the infrared. And what that, that has the effect of supersaturating an image to be red. There's a technical reason for doing that, and that's just so they can see more information and detail in the rocks, and so you can get more scientific information about the kind of composition, for example, of the rock. You see a better contrast as well if, with, by using the thread. But what they're actually doing is basically publicizing these images as real color images uh, in press releases to the public. Well, Jonah Birmingham says, NASA always airbrush everything out to hide <laughs> the truth from us all. And Neil in Cheshire says, Theo, do you think the technology used now is more effective than that used in the 1970s? Aren't the pics just better quality now? Well, I wouldn't <coughs> know, but uh, Anthony, maybe you know. Better resolution cameras. We can send more data back in one go. Um, but if we, 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 the Im first image we showed actually had a, a, a different type of, of calibration target on. And on that target, you could see the American flag, you could see blues, you could see red. And, that, well, just, and you also had, had the calibration target. So we know that they got the blues and the reds right in the first image. And, and in those ones, the sky was blue. And the skies are blue. Yet now, we don't have a particularly... I think, on the, actually, if you, if you go back into this image again, yeah. you might not see the, the detail. Oh, this is number but seven, yeah. Yeah, you see where the, there's actually some, some cable. On the top right part of the image, you see like some white lines. With that actually cables that basically, you know, joint for, for wiring and stuff. And they have the, these kind of what you can see as red uh, kind of... To cable ties actually, yeah. and these are actually blue. On the these are, these are blue cable ties as on the material, and actually again these are showing as bright red. So it's another example of like it's not just a calibration target that's flawed. Other co different colorations on the on the actual lander is everything's the wrong color. Okay, so, so I mean, yeah. yeah. All right, let's l lose that picture. Okay, so what we're what we're establishing here, I mean, <coughs> this is like this is an early part of the show. It's going to get <laughs> very interesting. I hope. Um, is that we're kind of being lied to. Yeah. And I think that's, that is fairly self-evident. Well, mis lied to is a strong word. Um, missing, well, it, there's a, it, could be, well, it could be that some, some person in the press office at, at JPL at NASA is simply putting out the wrong images, putting out the engineering, the images that were taken for engineering purposes to determine you know, more about the science rather than putting out images that the, you know, people can actually see what, what they would see if they were stood on the surface. It could be that. It's an, it could be by mistake. They've still got that, uh, the, that. You're going to let them yeah. off, are you? But no, well, not at this point, we, can st we don't know whether they're lying to us. It could be a mistake. I have had guests on this show who have told me that the true um, na acronym of NASA is never a straight answer. Yeah, I've heard that one too. <laughs> <laughs>